Hi, I'm Christina and welcome to the start of another weekly reading vlog. So this week I'm reading a mystery, Searching for Sylvie Lee by Jean Kwok. And I've read about 100 pages of this so far and I'm really, really enjoying it. I read about four pages and I just thought this is written so, so beautifully. So I'll read you the quote just to give you a little illustration of how well this book is written. I don't think I've read a book that's written this well for a good couple of months now. So yeah, to get four pages in and to just stop and go, wow, this is this is beautiful writing. And the way that she writes just gives you such a vivid insight into the characters so, so quickly. So literally I'd read, <laughs> I'd read one, two pages and it already felt like I knew exactly what this main character was thinking. And you just had so much information about her so, so quickly. And I think it's so amazing when an author can get you that captivated that quickly in her characters. So I'll read you the sentence that really made me go, <laughs> wow, I need to stop and just make a note of this one. So, Dazzling Sylvie, seven years older than me, yanked from her glamorous life in Europe back to our cabbage-scented apartment in Queens when I was only two years old. Often there's a dichotomy between the beautiful sister and the smart one, but in our family, both of those qualities belong to my sister. And me, I am only a shadow, an afterthought, a faltering echo. If I didn't love Sylvie so much, I'd hate her. And I just thought, what a great insight into the main character, literally on the second page. So our main character is Amy and she's 26 years old and she's kind of in that stage of her life when she doesn't quite know what she's doing, she doesn't quite know what she wants and she just feels a little bit lost. And then she has her older sister who is called Sylvie, who is 33 and she's in the stage of her life where it looks like everything is going perfectly to plan. So she's in a great marriage, in a beautiful, expensive apartment with lots and lots of degrees and an excellent career and, you know, just prospects that look incredible. And obviously that isn't necessarily the case. Um, but it's interesting to see this kind of difference between the sisters and the way that you can look at someone from the outside and not quite know what's actually happening in their real life. So I really like the setup between these two sisters, but they do love each other very, very much. So now that Sylvie has gone missing, Amy's going to step up and try and figure out what's happened to her sister. And this story is set across a few different places. So it's set obviously originally in New York where both Amy and Sylvie live. Uh, Sylvie lives with her husband and Amy lives with her parents. And then it's also set in the Netherlands. So their grandma lives in the Netherlands with a family member, a cousin and her husband and their child who is now a grown man. He's about 30 now but that's what the setup was. So originally their parents had emigrated from China to New York and they emigrated when she was pregnant with Sylvie and she didn't feel like she could raise Sylvie herself because she was working literally every hour that God sends and they didn't have a lot of money and they were literally struggling, you know, paycheck to paycheck, hand to mouth. So she sent her daughter to be raised by her cousin, Helena, and her mother, so grandma, in the Netherlands. So that's where Sylvie lived for the first nine years of her life. And it sounds a little bit like it was idyllic and a little bit like it was awful too. I think there's a lot of secrets here that are gonna be uncovered. So that's kind of the backstory. And then obviously there's seven years between the girls. So once she got pregnant with Amy, she was in a better kind of financial position and she raised Amy by herself. And then when Amy hits two years old, she asks for Sylvie to come back to live with them because she's now in a position where she can take care of her. So yeah, it's a really interesting family setup and there's a lot of excellent characters in here. And like I say, it's written so, so well. So, so far it's written from three different people's perspectives. So we have Amy's perspective and we have their mother's perspective. And then we have Sylvie's perspective in the past. So before she goes missing. And yeah, I am really, really enjoying it. This is actually on course to be a five-star read for me. I, I think it's so, so good. I'm really, really enjoying it. 
So yeah, I am actually mildly surprised by how much I'm liking this one. I haven't heard many people talking about this book on booktube. I think the reason I fancied reading this was because it was shortlisted for one of the Goodreads awards a couple of years ago, but it didn't win, it didn't make it very high, I think it was maybe like 8th, 9th, 10th, but it's really really good, I'm really really enjoying it, and yeah, I just can't wait to keep reading this book, it is maybe going to be a new favourite, so yeah. So I'm carrying on with my wardrobe declutter and I'm doing my summer stuff now. So this is all of my swimwear. I have all my bikinis there on the left and all of the swimsuits there on the right. So I'm going to try everything on and see what I like, what fits me. And I have a lot here because this is everything I've had since I was about, about 14, 15. So yeah, there's, there's a lot here. And I'm thinking quite a lot of this isn't going to be fitting me. So time to try it all on. So I have tried everything on and I had 12 bikinis and 7 swimsuits, which is a lot. And now I have 7 bikinis and 3 swimsuits, so that is much better. And I have all of these to donate to the charity shop. So I'm really, really pleased with that. I think it's really good. And I think I'm going to try on some of my other summer stuff now. So kind of shorts and like little vest tops and stuff like that. So that was all my swimwear done, now I'm moving on to my other summer stuff, so I have shorts, skirts and tops here. So I have 25 tops there, oh my goodness. I have six pairs of shorts and I have two skirts and that's everything that's going to the charity shop so far, so I'm doing well. So I'm going to try on all of these, possibly tonight, and then see what I want to keep. So I'm going to keep both of the skirts and then out of the six pairs of shorts I'm going to keep the free in the middle and then the free on the right hand side I'm going to donate to charity. So now I have all of those tops to try on. So out of those 25 tops I'm going to keep the 14 on the right and I'm going to donate the 9 on the left. So I think that's pretty good Gary and that's pretty good progress. So yeah I'm really chuffed with that. So out of everything I've sorted through tonight, this is the bag of clothes that I'm going to donate to charity and I'm really chuffed with that. It's pretty much a whole bag and yeah, I'm going to donate that to Cancer Research. So yeah, really, really pleased with that.
So it had been over a week and I hadn't read a single page of my book. I just wasn't in the mood to read. So this is now a fortnightly reading vlog and I have now finished Searching for Sylvie Lee and I really, really enjoyed this book. It is a definite five star read for me. So at its heart, it is a mystery, but it is so much more than that. It's really a book about family relationships and family dynamics. And I just thought it was so, so good. It was written so beautifully, so well written. There were so many quotes that made me feel something. I definitely had an emotional connection to a lot of these characters. And there was a part which made me cry. And I was just, it was so moving. It was such a poignant novel. And I really, really enjoyed it. So this book is initially set in New York, but the majority of the book is set in the Netherlands and a little chunk of it is set in Venice. And I really liked all of the settings. I thought it was done really, really well. And it's a book about family, about love, about grief. There's a lot of emphasis on sibling relationships, especially sisterhood. And then also relationships where you grow up with someone like a sibling, in this case, a second cousin, Lucas. And it was just really, really good. It's showing these intricate family dynamics and just the way these characters connect to each other, the way they talk to each other, the long-held family secrets that run through the generations and affect so much of the family dynamics and mean so much to different people at different times. And when certain secrets are uncovered, it kind of makes you look at different characters in different lights and you realise all along why some of the tensions were there, some of the frictions about a lot of the things that were going on, it starts to make sense. And it's also a book about um, mental health, about how people cope with things. It also focuses on how you can know someone you think very well and you can care about them a great deal and yet only know a very small part of their life and who they actually are. And it definitely talks about belonging and feeling like you belong in both a family and in a country and the culture behind this. and. It talks a lot about immigration and how people feel in different settings with different people in different circumstances. And I thought that was really interesting. I especially liked all the ways it discussed belonging, especially in this very intricate family dynamic, the way that certain characters felt more belonging with other characters. And then you saw some of these tensions arise between others. And I just thought that was done really, really well. It was really interesting. And I really enjoyed my time with the Lee family and the Tan family, I thought. It was really, really good. I will definitely be reading more by this author. I have them written down here. She's got one called Girl in Translation and one called Mambo in Chinatown. And I'm definitely interested in reading both of them. I really enjoy the way that she writes. So yes, this is definitely a new favourite of mine. It is really really good and I would highly recommend you read it if it sounds interesting to you. I think this is definitely my favourite book of May and it's going to be up there as probably one of my favourites at the end of the year. I think there's going to have to be a very very strong mystery novel to knock this one off my favourite mystery of 2021 so far. So yeah, I thought this is wonderful. I would absolutely recommend it to you. So thank you so much for watching. If you like the video, please do like it. And if you'd like to see more of me talking about books, please do subscribe. So I'll see you in my next video. Bye.